Trey Sport, brought to you by Nokia Asha Smartphones. Do it freestyle. If there wasn't wind and there wasn't waves, I actually don't know what I'll do. Because it would be, I don't know, it's, it just keeps me. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, it's just, it keeps me happy, it keeps me focused. It's yeah, actually, it's, there's not words to describe how wind and waves affect my life. Okay, so when I, I first told my mom that I wanted to go international and go into the world tour, in the beginning she wasn't uh, wasn't too supportive. But then uh, after getting my international sponsorship and seeing how I was progressing through the last six years of riding, she really decided that it was actually a good idea. So um, it was tough in the beginning, but it, it came right in the end, and I was quite happy when she said I could do it. Uh, going to Portugal for the first time was uh, very intimidating because it's uh, my first international event and I've never met the guys so I wasn't sure if it was going to be like uh, that ASP kind of vibe where you, you get the surfers that completely hate each other. So it was, I was expecting some, some negativity between riders but there was nothing like that so I kind of started to get comfy towards the end of the event with all the riders and then as soon as we got to Mauritius it was, everyone was friends with each other. Everyone was calling each other, trying to arrange accommodation and uh, lifts and cars and everything. So it, it, it all fell into place after the first event. It really opened my eyes to see the, the level of, of competition that, was, that I was going to be competing against in Portugal. So I really had to, to put my head down and just completely focus on kiting. Uh, and before I used to freestyle and, and do some racing and all of that. So I used to compete in all disciplines, but after going to Portugal it was like a no-brainer that I just had to focus on, on riding waves. So as soon as I got back to Cape Town, I trained only on my waveboard for a solid month. So I started riding strapless um, two years ago and uh, it was basically like starting from the beginning again because it was completely different, no straps, trying to get up on the board was, uh, was a little bit of a challenge. It was, it's a different feeling, it's completely different to the straps, it's like learning from the beginning again. So it was a, a new experience for me and I was really stoked to start pushing it and getting into it a lot more than I, than I did before. So on my way to Mauritius in the plane, uh, we were flying over the, the reef and I knew exactly where the reef was because I've been eyeing it out on Google Maps and uh, I just got so excited to ride that wave. It just looked so good and big and I could see the wind and the white caps on the water. So I was so amped to get out of, of the plane and just jump in the water as soon as I could.
to get onto the, the Kitesurf Pro World Tour, um, I had to, to win the South African Kiteboarding Tour. And basically what happened in the last event is uh, I was busy doing all disciplines and I did some racing and what happened was uh, I had a piece of chop real bad and my board hydrofoiled. So my, my ankle got stuck in the strap and I twisted it and uh, I had to get off the water. And I got, went to the doctor and he told me basically I can't kite for a, a few, two or three weeks. And um, I didn't accept that. I went back to the beach, duct taped my foot up, did another race. The big thing was I got I won the wave riding discipline with a, a twisted ankle. So if it wasn't for duct tape, I wouldn't be on the KSP World Tour this year. The whole KSP World Tour is basically a riders driven tour so it's a, a bunch of guys that kind of get together, have a meeting, see where they want to ride, see where they want to place the tour and that's, that's kind of what we do, we go there, if there's no wind all the riders get together, go for a surf, whatever. So I was 17 when I started on the World Tour and um, it was a, a big jump for me because I had to, to organise my own flights, my own accommodation, my own transport and it's, it's a bit of a mission for me because I can't, I don't have a driver's licence because I'm too young so trying to get to the airport to the locate to my house, it's, it's a big mission and from the house to the beach every day. I had to grow up a lot because uh, I had to start making proper decisions and organizing everything by myself because there was no one else there to that knew what I needed so um, it was a big gap for me to jump to to be able to get all that in in place but uh, after Portugal and after Mauritius I I feel comfortable throwing me in any airport and I'll make my way home somehow there's not a lot of people out there that can say that they followed their dreams dropped out of school started homeschooling and on into what they wanted to do. So I'm, I'm very lucky that I've been able to do that. Riding for ROD is, is a lot different to other brands as in uh, testing wise, because with other brands you have a certain test group that tests the, the kites. And with uh, Roberto Ricci Designs, it's only riders that test the gear. It's a good thing because uh, it's, it's a really hard job. It's not as, as amazing as everyone thinks it is. You stay on the beach from 6 o'clock till 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, testing gear, the odd water break, the odd sandwich while someone's busy doing something to the kite. It's not as glamorous as everyone thinks, sitting on the beach all day. I ride in light winds, I ride in super strong winds, I ride in no wind, it's on the 18s, and uh, it just pushes myself, and well, pushes, I push myself in the lighter winds and the stronger winds, because it's what I have to do, it's my job. So testing inch and every size of, of the already range, it's, uh, it's good for me because I get to ride everything from the four square meters or the three square meters to the 18 square meters. And uh, it basically forces me to ride in every kind of condition, punishing the kites, testing the kites and uh, it, it makes me a better all-round rider riding every possible kite that we make.
after this year of traveling and competing, I'm really grateful to my parents and to my sponsors for making everything possible. I've traveled to some amazing places, some insane locations, and I've met amazing people. I'm currently ranked fourth in the world, and uh, sometimes I just wake up at night and think about how lucky I am and how I followed my dreams. It's been really epic to kite in such amazing places. It's a really a dream come true. Okay, so my top five things to do is uh, firstly kiting, obviously, because uh, it's just a good release on no matter what you do. Secondly, uh, spending time with my girlfriend is always an important factor. Uh, number three would be either going for a surf or a, or a SUP. Um, it just depends on the conditions. Uh, number four would be spending time on Facebook, uh, uploading videos, taking photos and updating status, keeping everyone involved. And then uh, number five would be just to go for a skate down the beachfront, just to, just to enjoy the scenery for a while. Sport brought to you by Nokia Azure Smartphones. Do it freestyle.